Welcome to the video demonstration of Computer System Innovations Profile Editor. This video demonstration will outline the basic use and configuration from the administration portal to use the Profile Editor. The Profile Editor is a set of tools that allow you to create and expose multiple member demographics to your users and members via your website in, the order for, in order to capture information and allow you to easily change it. It consists of two components. One is the administration interface, which is the bulk of the uh, content for this video. Uh, the second is a control. But the control is basically a user authenticated uh, control that you can add to your website. Uh, to any user authenticated page. Uh, the control will then know who's logged in and then via a variety of different methods uh, determine what profiles that person has access to. Uh, that person then can update their demographics anywhere from name, address, all the way to custom demographics that you may have set up. Uh, the control itself is uh, just that. It's a control. You drop it on the page and make a couple of uh, styling changes, and from there it kind of takes over. Uh, bulk of what happens in the control itself actually comes from the administration of the profile and the creation of the profiles, and that's what we're going to discuss today. The profiles are basically a series of tabs and fields that you define that a member will be able to see and edit in order to keep their, their actual uh, profile and demographics up to date. When we create a profile, you simply go to the Create Profile, and we're going to create a new profile. We're going to call it the Demo Profile. And once you create the Demo Profile, you'll see that it automatically takes you to the Edit Profile page. The Edit Profile page has four different pieces. It has Edit Properties, Edit Design, Edit Qualifiers, and Preview. The Edit Properties allows you to see the name, update the description, and indicate whether the profile is active, and whether this profile includes the parent profile, which we'll get into later. If the profile is not active, it will not show. If the profile is active, it will show, assuming that the rules from the qualifiers apply. And we will get to that shortly as well. In the edit design mode, you'll see that it's laid out in a series of tabs, much like a browser interface. You can easily change the name of the tab by simply changing it and clicking Save. You'll see now that the actual tab has a different name on it. And this is going to be used to help uh, organize the demographic information that you want to capture. So in this case, we're going to capture some member information, and we also want to capture information about their address. So we're going to go ahead and add another tab by clicking the plus, and you see it automatically pops up with the default, and we're going to change this to address and click save. And you see now that we have a member information and address, and then we're also going to create another one called miscellaneous. Under each tab is where you would add the individual fields. Also note that you can change at any time the order of the tabs. And at any time, you can add another tab. And to delete the tab, you simply click the X and delete the tab. Whenever you want to add uh, information, typically there's two different ways to do it. Uh, depending on the website, you may have a lot of real estate to work with or you may not. If you have a lot of real estate to work with, you can have it set up in a multi-column where you actually have two different sections of information. Uh, in the cases where you have maybe a mobile setting or something that with less real estate, you can go with just one single column of information. To add a new section, you click Add Section. When you do that, you'll see that a, a, a control pops up that allows you to then select information from IMIS. 
Now, there's a variety of information that appears in here. Uh, obviously, information from the name, name address will appear up here. Also, any IMIS demographic table, a table that you would create when you go in and use the UD uh, Windows feature, any demographic that you have in IMIS, whether it's single instance or multi-instance, will appear in here. All you have to do is add a new field in IMIS, and it's immediately available. In addition to that, there are a variety of other fields that are considered to be pretty core. Uh, obviously, all the name fields, like first name, last name, birth date, all those will appear here as well. There's also a set of custom controls, and the custom controls provide you with a way to add additional functionality and capture additional information that may not be uh, accessible via just a simple text field. So in this case, we're going to add the name, and we're going to add first name, and you can see that it automatically fills in a default uh, for the display. We'll also tell you a little bit about the information of the type of field that it is. I click Save, and you'll notice that it's added it now to my section, and now it says first name. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another field. In this case, I'm going to add last name. And I've already created my first two fields of information that I want to capture for the user. If you click the preview button at any time, you will actually see what it will look like to the user. Now this is styled in the profile admin CSS, so it's going to be very vanilla. Uh, the CSS that will be associated with your particular site will be controlled by the control itself, and it will inherit the style from your website. So any text, fonts, colors, any kind of attributes will all be inherited from your website, and the fields will inherit that. And again, same thing, you can click between the tabs in a preview mode, and you can see the different pieces of information. If you want to add a, a section to the right, you just would add section. In this case, we're going to add birth date. You can again see date of birth. It tells you the field type is date. Click Save, and there's my date of birth. Again, if I preview, you can see I have the two columns now, that as well as the birth date. Each of these fields have a variety of attributes that you can change. If I want to go in and change this to something like DOB, an abbreviation, I can do that. It now says DOB. If I go into the preview, you see it says DOB. Uh, very easy to change. Another thing that you can do is access a variety of other attributes. Uh, depending on the field type, in this case it's a text field, we can go and look at the appearance of it. Uh, the appearance is only going to be a text box or an HTML text box. Uh, there's two different kinds of other attributes you can deal with. One is a required field and one is a read only. In a required field setting, it will make sure that that information is filled in. If the user does not fill that in, they will be prompted that they need to complete that field before it will save. Read only basically forces that field to be read only. And as you can see here, I can edit the last name, but I cannot edit the first name. In addition to that, you have a variety of validation. Uh, in this case, because of the field type, you have the regular expression validation. Regular expression uh, you can search on that on uh, on Google. Uh, it's a, basically a way to provide a format, a required format through a series of specialized characters uh, to help enforce uh, information. A good example of that would be the email address. In the case of an email address, you want to make sure that the user provides you a valid email address. There are regular expressions out there that will validate whether what they that they put in was a valid email. So you would indicate what the regular expression is here, and you would put in what your regular expression message would be here. Uh, basically, you would put in your expression, and here you would say, please enter a valid email address. Uh, once you do that, again, when they're actually editing it and they're putting in the information, if they don't put in a valid email address, it will actually show you the message that you typed in there. On the date of birth 
that it's a, it's a field uh, type as a date. You'll see the appearance is the same thing. The control is a little different. The control is going to be a date picker, which will allow you to actually pick the date from a calendar if you need to. has the same fields required, read only. Under the validation, you can see there's a valid range, date range, from and to. Uh, if you need to indicate that perhaps there is a date for which they can't go below or above or must be within, uh, you can actually put this in here and it will help to validate the data as they put the information in. If they don't put the right dates in, it will tell them that, there, that it needs to be in the date range that you've specified. There are additional fields that you can add. For example, uh, under name, uh, let's go with doing the prefix. Now, the prefix is actually a um, general lookup table. It, it belongs to a validation list. And in this case, the validation list is the prefix. So you'll see that uh, the type is still char, and the only difference is now is the validation list is there. Appearance, again, it's going to give you a different options. Drop-down list, list box, radio list, because this is something that they're going to have to pick from a list. And a validation, there is no validation for a general lookup table because that's essentially doing the validation. If we go ahead and we add it and then go into the preview, you'll see now you have a prefix and you have a drop down list. So here are all the values that one can pick. Now a couple things we want to note with this. First off, um, it looks as though the prefix is actually after all the fields here, which probably is incorrect. So you can move the fields by clicking on them and using the up arrow. And you see you just move the prefix to the top. If I go into preview, you can see now the prefix is probably where it should be. So now I can say Mr. Test user. One other note on the prefix. It will always default to the validation list that was selected for that field, either from the demographic tables you create or from INIS. You can override these. You can, if you want, make that validation list be different. There are some cases in which the values you want the users to be able to select from may be a subset of what you use in IMIS and back office. You can create a new validation list in IMIS, and then when you go into the field here, you can click override, and you can actually select a completely different list and that's the list that will actually be populated when you hit the drop down. With the address, you can add a section. We're going to go ahead and add the name address. We're going to add address pur purpose 2, which is our street address. And again, if we preview, you'll see we have the member information, and now we have our address information, complete with the state and country codes. And then under miscellaneous, we'll go ahead and add some information from the name demo here. Um, number of inside sales. And again, if you preview, you can see that the fields just add as you go. Now, as indicated before, if you go back to the list profiles, you'll see that, again, it's not active. So if we edit the profile, if we want to make the profile active, we would just check active and click save. That alone will not allow the profile to actually show for a user. For that, we need to talk about the qualifiers. Now, you can have a variety of profiles. You could have one profile that works for everybody, or you could have profiles that work for a certain section of your members. And to do that, you would go into the qualifiers. When, you, when you're editing a profile, you can add a qualifier. Now, I'm going to add a very basic qualifier. I'm going to simply say, member type is new. So somebody who signs up, they're a brand new member, IMIS is going to give them a member type of new. By adding, by adding this, <laughs> then 
anybody who has a new member type will see this profile. So if I log in and I do not have a new web, uh, new member type, maybe I have a company member type, then I will not see this profile. You can add multiple demographics. You can even say, I want to be able to see this profile if I'm a new member type and if I am a COL member type. So if I have either of these two member types, I will see this profile. If I do not, I will not see any profile. When it comes to demographics, there's really no limit to what you could use. Uh, the two defaults are member type and status. To add additional member types, you could find that information in the instruction manual. They basically are working off of any table that has an ID, an IMIS ID, something that it can track that user back to in order to find out whether that data qualifies. Uh, you could even create very complex rules. Perhaps you have a rule where you have a profile that is only good for people who are on a certain committee. For those, you can actually create a view in which the view returns the IMS ID and the committee positions. And then in here, you could add that as a qualifier to say, if anybody is in this committee position, they can see this profile. So you could really expand this to uh, as far as your mind can, can uh, take it. So you have some other features in here we'll talk about real quick. List profile obviously lists the profiles. Edit profile will allow you to pick a profile and edit it. Uh, clone profile. Clone profile will allow you to take an existing profile and clone it to a new profile. That is very helpful when you're creating new profiles. For example, if my demo profile is currently being used, but I want to make some changes to it, I can make changes to it while other people are actually actively using it. But it might make more sense if I go and I clone the profile, because that will make an exact copy of this, but make it inactive. Then I can go through and modify it, change it, preview it, test it, make sure that it works and looks just fine. And then when I'm all done, I can simply go in and turn one profile off and turn the next profile on. By doing that, I have a way to switch from an old profile to a new profile. There are some other types of uh, views that you can use. Uh, right now, there are certain fields that you can add, which uh, the profile editor will automatically assume are read-only. Uh, one example of that is uh, the join date. Uh, you'll see that the join date is a date field. Uh, but if you look on the appearance, you can see read-only is checked and it's not something you can uncheck. That's because we want to be able to give people the ability to show this information, but typically it has something, it has a lot of business rules associated with it in IMIS. Therefore, you would not want to let somebody actually change that field, but it might be something that they want to see. One other thing that you can do, there are ways to add what's available in this list beyond the demographic tables and those that are actually selected uh, by default, such as a lot of the name table uh, fields. There are times where somebody would like to say, show their members what their last 10 orders were. We obviously don't want to give them access to the orders table or invoices or activities, things that have a, a lot of business rules associated with it. We don't want them to be able to add it or remove it. Therefore, what you can do is you can create a view, a view that shows a list of orders. As long as that view has the ID field in it and a sequence number, which is unique if it's a multi-instance, then there is a store procedure, again, and you can look that up in the, the user guide, that allows you to take that view and add those fields from the view into this list. And then you could create from there a view or a, sh or a series of uh, fields on the page that will allow you to view that information when the member's logged in but not be able to change it. 
Other thing that you can do is you can add demographic tables. In this example, we're adding a donor club. We're going to add the donor club name. We're going to add that as a section. You can see when you add a multi-instance table, you can see that it takes up the entire length of the page to let you know that it's going to be a table. And we're going to add the year. And we're going to add the total. Now, if you preview this, you'll see that not only do we have our fields from before, but now we have this table of information. And the table will allow you to add and to delete and to edit actual entries in here. If you do not want to give them the ability to edit, then what you would do is go in here and make these read only. And when you preview it now, you can see that the add button is no longer there. So they would just basically be seeing a list of information that they would not be able to change. Also, you can move these fields around. Uh, obviously, you can change this over. You can move it to the left if you don't want that information there. That concludes the video demonstration of the profile editor and basic use. Detailed information can be found in the user guide. And any questions can be about the product can be found at www.csiinc.com.